Welcome to my channel, YouTubers. I'm Coach LeBlanc, expat in China, giving you an idea of what it's like here. If you're new to my channel, have a look around. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're coming back, I'm glad you're here. Today we're going to talk about traffic and driving in China. Now, many Westerners, when they first come to China and they get stuck in traffic, they're in a taxi or there's a supplier's taken to visit somewhere or they're trying to uh, get through uh, tourist traffic on buses, they are terrified. Terrified there's just so many cars here and there seems to be chaos everywhere. Well, after some years driving in China, about 12 years now, I got a different opinion. I think I've come to the realization Chinese are some of the best drivers in the world. When you drive in China, the flow of traffic is a bit like it's a bit like being in a giant pond of carp. Just like here, I'm showing you. Giant pool of carp that's grossly overloaded with too many fish in one small pond. They are swimming so close together all the time. They are always changing lanes, changing direction, but together they flow along the highways. They flow through intersections. They flow together. There is a bit of harmony here in China. The way people follow each other. They don't so much worry about uh, using indicators and things, but they watch each other very closely. They can feel each other next. You can feel each other. When you're driving in China, you are so close to each other. There are so many cars here. You have to be comfortable in being very, very close and up and close and personal, whether you're in the traffic, whether you're in a queue in a shop, you go to a supermarket, anywhere. You have to be comfortable with having little space around you. Because the Chinese are getting up so close and personal, driving so close to each other, jammed so close together, and trying to all together wriggle around little accidents, wriggle around little bikes and people walking randomly on the road. It, you can't help but follow everyone else. You have no choice. Just like in a big pool of fish, if the fish start to change direction, you gotta go that way as well. Too bad you don't want to. But you go with the flow here. And once you learn to go with the flow and follow the flow of the traffic, or the flow of the fish in the, in the pond or in the river. It's pretty smooth sailing. You have very few accidents, you have very few issues. No one drives very, very fast here. The general flow of traffic is quite, quite slow, but it's smooth. It's smooth and uh, there's a constant weaving of everybody. In and out, we all weave in and out of our lanes to follow each other and to avoid a little uh, electric bike on the road, a little grandma on the road cleaning the street. It's just how it happens. And when you talk about space for parking, there is no space for parking in China because of the so many people, so many cars now. It's getting worse every year. I see Chinese squeeze their car in the most insane places I would never try. You know, I've been driving for, oh my God, since I was 17. And that's a lot of years. And it, it I think I'm a pretty good driver. You know, I've, I've gone and had fun driving uh, weekend NASCAR racing and all kinds of crazy things. I've done a lot of four-wheel driving, mountain four-wheel driving. I've been all over the place. I used to ride dirt bikes for years. 
Yeah, you come here and the Chinese have no choice but to try, and they try. They get it. They they park in the most ridiculous little places, squeeze their car in, reverse parallel parking. Chinese have it done. They, I see some women doing reverse parallel park that I would I would never try. They manage to very quickly reverse into the most tiny little spaces where it looks like the car has been put there by a forklift or something. It looks like the car has been slid in sideways and not actually parked after they finished. Tiny little space in the front and the rear. It would take me uh, an hour to get into a space like that and they do it in a couple of minutes. If you go to a lot of restaurants here, there's a lot of restaurants on the highways and the main roads and that parking, there's no car parks. So if you're lucky, you get to park along the front of the restaurant, off the main road. And there'll be a, a, a couple of parking guys guiding people who uh, work in the, in the restaurant. And those parking guys just give you a bit of a direction, but you have to reverse off the main road into the most ridiculous small spaces. In northern China, when I visit uh, some of the family, it's snowing, there's ice everywhere, and people are still cruising along together, no big dramas, no big traffic jams. They still drive through ridiculous amounts of snow and ice, and reversing into some of these tiny spaces off the main road in these conditions is even more challenging. But they're all doing it. So when you come to China and you see how the traffic looks insane, you watch it for a while and you'll be quite impressed with how, how easily the traffic seems to work its way, work its way down the road, down the highway in insane bumper to bumper traffic jams and how close the cars get. You know, I got motivated to make this video because the last couple of days, there's been uh, quite a number of ridiculous accidents and situations where I'm sure I was gonna get sideswiped, squashed by a bus. Later got caught in another traffic jam, all in one day about four massive traffic jams and just the way Chinese managed to manipulate and follow each other and squeeze together through the most ridiculous tight little gaps is incredible. You can see today is a very nice day. It's quite clear. Traffic's not too bad. That's only because I've just got through all the bad traffic. Right now we're about three or four kilometers from, from the office, from the factory, which is out in the industrial area. And there's still a lot of traffic around. When you're in heavy traffic, there's all these electric bikes you can see here, and these little tiny trikes, and then the cleaners on the side of the road that get stuck in the middle of the road sometimes to clean up some mess. They are always in some of the worst places, the most built up traffic areas you can imagine.
some of those areas, if you have some of these guys on tiny little trikes and bikes, bikes parked on the side of the road near bus stations, or the electric bikes, or the cleaner on the road, everyone has to avoid them. So if they're on your side of the road, your lane, you just, you don't indicate, you just pull out, you just veer out of your lane a little bit into the next lane, the next lane moves into the another lane and they all squash together and then three, three cars end up almost squashed into two lanes. But still don't slow down too much, everyone keeps driving together, everyone just flows and follows each other. It's quite a crazy experience. And when you first encounter it, you think, oh my God, that guy's gonna squash straight into me, he can't see me. They can see you. They just expect you to keep getting out of their way if they're coming towards you. It's just the general rules of the road here. We give each other space, but not too much space. And we squeeze together through the small gaps. All right, almost to work now. Give it a challenge if you come to China. Have it, if you have a chance to get your driving license and drive in China, don't give up the challenge. Try it, you'd be impressed. I think you'll be surprised, the longer you're here, how good Chinese drivers are. How they manage to squeeze through the most insanely tight little gaps. And it's quite smooth, the way the, the traffic flows, like fish in the pond. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you find anything of this interesting, don't forget to like the video. If you've got any comments or anything else you'd be interested in hearing and seeing what goes on here, seeing about China, hit me up in the comments. Let me know. Until next time, be safe, safe driving.